So about a year and a half ago, YouTube fired me. I mean, there wasn't anything for them to fire me from. I haven't made any money from YouTube in I think about 10 years. See, I have been on YouTube and had a channel since like 2005 or 2006. And even though I used to be fairly prolific, at least by 2006 standards, it came and went, ebb and flowed. Most of the content I was producing was for clients and I wasn't producing content for myself. So the channel sort of went dormant and I would only occasionally post updates or like trailers for other things I was working on or a very rare occasional short film. So this week I got fired again from YouTube or at least a notification that not only was I dropped from the partner program, but that the contract that I had signed with YouTube as a YouTube partner was now going to be null and void after a certain date. And if I did reach their threshold for qualification of thousand subscribers, however many thousands of views per month, then I could reapply. Here's the thing. I used to make a lot of things and I used to make a lot of things on a frequent basis, whether it was comics or music or videos or carbon dioxide, whatever it is. For the last two plus years, I've been working almost exclusively on Parkway Broken Dreams, the documentary about the Vegas scene in the 90s that y'all probably know about if you're watching this. Everything in my life creatively has been about that. The film is pretty much done. Uh, I'm kind of just putting the finishing touches on it, like going, oh, we can get better footage of this thing, or, you know, I get a late coming, you know, archival thing from somebody and be like, oh, this is perfect to put there. You know, the music's not good here, let's replace it with that. Just doing all that kind of tweaking. And also some things that were super necessary. But anyway, point is, that's what I've been working on. And I've had, I have documents, I have all these ideas for short form stuff. And I have all these ideas for comedy stuff. You know, the problem is that uh, the work I've been doing has been very serious. The documentary, even though it's not like a, it's not like an investigative deep dive into some sort of like sex trafficking scheme or something, I like to think that I can be and have been a funny guy in the past. Life's been real serious recently. I lost both my parents recently. There's a pandemic going on. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there's civil unrest. There's injustice in the world. There's black people getting gunned down for the sole crime of being black. I'm sure that other people who are also creative producers in any media understand this. It's really hard to just make things that you enjoy and that you hope other people will enjoy. And that's been sort of my problem is that like I feel guilty when I'm working on just things that are seeming frivolous or sort of inconsequential to like the bigger picture of everything that's going on. So I've got all these concepts that are pretty much just waiting for me to finish this film, but I'm trying to at least like script things and write things down. I mean, I'm also in the middle of finishing one screenplay and pitching another thing, and I'm trying to keep the fires going or the coals in the fires or whatever that stupid metaphor is. I mean, if we look around my studio, you know, almost everything is sort of just entirely focused on Parkway Broken Dreams. I've got, uh, I bought a zip drive to hopefully find some uh, material that I thought was sitting on an old zip disc, which there wasn't. I bought a, a VCR uh, so that I could rip tapes because I was tired of paying like $100 every time I had to send it off to some facility to get, uh, you know, digitized. You know, I've got old magazines and publications from Vegas and other places. I just picked up these Maximum Rock and Roll issues because there's a lot of talk about Maximum Rock and Roll in the doc, so I was like, well, I need footage of Maximum Rock and Roll. I've, I've got my notes and all of my scatterbrain chicken scratch that goes along with that. I have these props printed out that I need to stage so that I can shoot this B-roll for the film. Like everything is that. And everything else is pretty much day job stuff because well, it's not like I'm getting paid to make the documentary right now. Hopefully down the line, someone will be paying for it. Um, but I put my own money in up front and then there was the crowdfunding campaign we did that we got some of your money because probably some people watching this contributed. I still have bills to pay, so that's a thing that I do for 40 plus hours a week. And then I do this other stuff. And that's fine, but it takes real time and effort. 
And my YouTube channel has, of course, gone fallow as a result because I've also gotten this lurch of like always having to have perfect content to post. If you guys see what's going on here, I've got, you know, lights and microphones and this, this lamp over here, that's not normally there. Um, and I didn't even put that much effort into this shot. Like this is, this is still relatively low, low, low effort. I can't get past that mindset because I'm like, oh, well, I'm a filmmaker, so everything has to look really good and sound really good. And it's like, content is king, is what they say. And it's true, like really good content is really way more important than high production value. If anything's proven that, like it's people's willingness to watch, you know, entire TV shows recorded, you know, with webcams, you know, on Zoom during the pandemic or whatever. And it's hard for me to get out of that mindset. It's really hard because I have people that I've been collaborating with in the past on projects who are like, hey, let's do stuff. And I'm like, can't do it right now. All that being said, I'm kind of stuck here with this YouTube thing because I don't like being held hostage by YouTube. <laughs> But at the same time, I understand they're like, look, we're, uh, you know, it's no longer just a scrappy upload whatever you want and, you know, great sort of thing. Like, it's a website that is competing with Netflix and uh, Amazon and all the other streaming services. And they're like, we want creators who are going to put out consistently engaging content that people are going to consume, that our algorithms can send to them or whatever. I don't want to just delete the channel. I've got hundreds of videos on here. A lot of them are really just junky. A lot of them are kind of pointless. A lot of them are personal, and they only like matter if like you're like into some other creative project that I do, my comics or my music or whatever. You're like, oh, I want to see what he's working on this week, and that was pretty much what the channel had been for a long time. And now I'm like, oh well, what I'm working on is not that exciting because honestly, watching me edit a movie in fits and starts is not that exciting. At least it's not to me. Uh, even though I watch filmmaking behind the scenes stuff all the time, it's not like I'm on set somewhere. Uh, I'm in this space and in front of this computer and just clicking on things and, uh, you know, in between that, you know, spending an hour looking for the right 30 second music clip to stick into a movie. I'm really trying to figure out how I can use the tools I have to create engaging content that doesn't require so much effort for conception and for creation, and still post on a regular basis, and I'm not sure what that is. And I'm, I'm. If you've made it this far, bless you. I'm looking for your suggestions of like what kind of things you think that you would like to see that other people aren't doing. Here's the thing I've realized after years and years and years of doing what I do. I know how to do a lot of things that other people don't, and people are always asking me, hey, can you show me how to do, do this, or, you know, how do I do that, or, you know, do you have any advice for someone starting out in this, and I give the advice, and I don't really share it with the rest of the world, and I mean, people asking me about how to get into making comics, or, you know, how to get into marketing, or, you know, journalism, or whatever it is. I'd like to bring that knowledge to other people, so maybe that's the idea, but I kind of want to take your questions and then answer them because right now I'm so focused on the finishing the documentary that I can't even think of ideas. So, but there's an idea. And if not, I've got my list of projects I'll get to when the documentary is done. And you know, if it, if it gets done, it gets done. If it doesn't, whatever. But you know, I would like to keep my YouTube channel active, not just because of the whole partner program thing or whatever, but because there's no reason that I can't be putting good stuff on there that people want to watch. And uh, listen, there's only so many times you can watch Key and Peele clips. That's a lie. You can never stop watching Key and Peele clips. But at some point they run out and then you're like, there's no new Key and Peele. It's like, yeah, no, there's not. So now what? Now you're gonna be stuck watching this stupid video blog. Sorry.